you're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, surf fresh all week long. Now, let's dive in. Today's guest is uh, a very special delight from the East Coast. She's not a New York housewife, but she's a Jersey veteran. Well, I think she's a Jersey OG. She came in in season three, and she's been a veteran and a staple ever since. Please welcome uh, a lady that never has envy in her heart, but she's the queen of the MV empire, Melissa Gorga. Well, hello. I love that. I love that. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Let's just use the word envy all day. I like that. <laughs> how, how is envy doing? Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. We just opened uh, the second location in New York. So now I have one in New Jersey, one in New York. Uh, it's crazy. It keeps me very busy, to say the least. Like, I literally just picked the clothes that you are going to wear like pre-fall for like next year. I, I, you're like, you have no idea. I'm picking summer, spring and summer right now. Um, so it's crazy how far in advance that I know what we're all going to wear. That's like the best part about it all. Uh, but it's awesome. It was, I always say it's the best thing that came out of housewives just because of the fact that like, I have this situation where I'm able to bring more to the table than just the drama, right? Yeah. To show like the the business side of me as well. Do you feel like now you've earned Joe's respect? Because at the beginning he was like, oh, this is your little side project. And now here you are. You've kept Envy sustainable for all these years, opened up a second location. It's still going strong. Yes, I feel like that is the biggest, like, I think he gets in shock over what Envy has become, as well as so do I, because you never know, you know, a lot of the housewives come out with, you know, their drinks and this and that and whatever, and God bless everyone who tries to do something, but it's not always easy to pull a brand right from from housewives. So um, I think it just came natural to me to for clothing and people just always asking me what I'm wearing, where I got it. And so I put my little thinking cap on and I was like, how about just buy it from me instead of me constantly sending everyone to other boutiques, right? So I feel like that's just kind of what we did and that's how that went. So it's online too, right? So people can go online and order directly from the website? Yes. So um, envybymg.com, everything that's in store is also online. So that's that's the best part because we have fans everywhere, right? So, you know, even with my Instagram following, like I have people in Alabama, California, Illinois, all day long just shopping on Envy. So it's great. It's really, really awesome. What do you think has made your housewives business sustainable versus like other houses? Like, like you mentioned, some people will come in, they'll have drinks or they'll launch, you know, a clothing line and they don't kind of last. You know, I think it's very authentic. I think I'm very hands on. I really work hard at it. I don't hire, I do have, you know, a lot of people under me. I'm actually feeding families with envy, but I, um, I don't, put a lot on, I don't delegate enough probably, but I am very hands-on. I am at both of my stores. I am picking every article of clothing that you see is handpicked by me. I don't let anyone else, not my managers, no one picks the clothing other than myself. Um, I'm looking at the reviews. I'm reading the Instagram comments. I'm on the girls about the, the, you would be, you would think I'm crazy with some of the things I call my store managers about, but I feel bad for them because people tattletale <laughs> on them or who, on every little thing, because it's like, they DM me and they're like, Melissa, I went in your store. So-and-so was great. This one could have been like, they tell me, and so, you know, sometimes they go a little too above and beyond. I'm like, yeah. okay. But like, always, usually always positive. Um, but it's like, I get feedback. I, I definitely get feedback all day long. Only I could just open my Instagram and there's a thousand DMs from someone who was just at my store, right? So it's funny. That's funny. How are the kids? I saw uh, you were getting Antonia ready to go back to college. Yes, they're good. She's she started her sophomore year. So it's kind of like, it's like so crazy to have a child that's like moving into her own she moved into her own apartment this year with like roommates and it's just crazy because you know i was a young mom i had i got pregnant with antonia at 25. so um i know now i'm watching these other moms uh <laughs> what is this called and i'm like oh my oh. god was i like that like having babies at Se 25. are you talking about secret wives of of secret lives of mormon wives the young TikTok moms yes 
Yes, I was so I watched it for the first I only saw one episode so yeah. far. So I'm not an expert, but I watched it for the first time last night and I was like, oh, I was a young mom like this. Like this is so funny. I thought it was crazy, by the yeah. way. But she's doing great. She's doing awesome. She loves college. And um she's just, you know, she in like that life right now, you know, just living the dream. Yeah. Um how has, I mean, now I feel like you guys, you and Joe are approaching that like early nester phase. How is the kids growing up and kind of getting out of the house? Because I imagine you don't need to be as hands-on with them anymore. How's that affected your marriage? Like now you guys have more alone time together. You know what we do, but I still have a 14 year old and yeah. do you know, the the two boys are so on me. Like they need to eat 24 hours a day. They need rides 24 hours a day. They need me constantly. So I'm not super there yet. I feel like because I had Antonia so young and people see her going off and and like I have girlfriends that are my age that I went to high school with. They have like six year olds and four year olds. And, and I'm like, ah, oh, like what did I do? I did everything so young, which I do appreciate doing that now, just because like the life that I'm in, the kids are so much more functioning and self-functioning and it's better for me than having like, nannies everywhere and yeah. like you know they can they fend for themselves a lot of the time thank god um but yeah we definitely are i am starting to see what you're saying though we do spend a lot more time where the kids are have their own plans and they're going to parties and they're doing whatever they want to do they do not want to be with us they don't want to hang out with us as much it's it's sad it's definitely entering like a little bit of a different stage yeah because you know, we're just such a close family. We always did everything together. Everything for us was about the kids. So I'm like, what do you mean you don't want to hang out with us? Like, where are you going? Yeah. You know, so it's it's definitely going to be an adjustment. I think Joe, you know, for both of us, really. Yeah. I mean, well, you guys, we watched your family and the kids grew up kind of in front of our eyes over the past, what, 13 years? Has it been 13? Um, 14. 14 because years. I go off of Joey's age. That's how I know how long yeah. I've been. He was two months old at his christening and he's 14. So I kind of just go by however old Joey is, is how long I've been doing the housewives thing. Was there ever any hesitation? Because now we've seen like some of the housewife kids that have grown up that don't really want to be a part of the cameras or maybe, you know, don't love that some of their cringy teenage moments are living on TV. Was that ever a combo for you and Joe? And was there ever hesitation with putting the kids on TV? Um, I think there was hesitation over like what we're going to speak about um, yeah. certain things, like especially for Antonia, like growing up and, you know, but we we did pretty much put everything out there. I, I remember speaking to her about boys on the show. Um, I remember just like talking about how rough it was when she tore her ACL and she was a little depressed and yeah. we moved her in the middle of high school. We've definitely had some hard conversations with them on TV. I will say, I feel like, whatever we did, like they are so unfazed by like the celebrity world and like who they are. And the fact that like, when we go out, sometimes people notice my kids before they notice me, they do not care. Like they are unfazed. <laughs> no, and I really do love yeah. that about them. Like they're so humble. It's like, they don't know. And they're just like, hi, how, like, they're just, they don't get it. And I, I think that's the best part. And I think people can see that just through social media and the show that they're just down to earth. It didn't affect their lives much. We never put them totally, totally forefront where, you know, we showed what was going on in our house and our lives, but I never put them in the drama. Yeah. You know, I always kept them away from the dirty. And I think that, I'm grateful that I did that. And I think that was the right choice to do. Yeah. I mean, and we saw that on the show too. You know, there were moments where you were having conversations with Antonia about like, listen, we respect our family. We respect our cousins. Like, you know, we don't need to get into the mix of things. What would you say were some of your favorite moments from the show? I mean, 14 years, it's a lot of, a lot of airtime. Oh my gosh. It's so many. Some things I even forget a lot of things. Like I have like some fan accounts. They'll just randomly posts like an old video or an old clip from the show. And I'm like, oh my God, I totally forgot about that. Like just anything with the kids because yeah. to see the difference in age, like they showed us, somebody posted something the other day and we were like, Joe and I were in a tractor trailer and I totally forgot we even filmed that scene. Like just like fun, the fun scenes are what oh, yeah. I 
like live for when I look back and see it. They showed us, I think we were like sledding with the kids or something. And I'm like, they were so little. And Joe made me tennis tongue got stuck to a pole and my son freaked out. Yeah. And it was like, these are the things that I do love that are on camera. And sometimes we have a family group chat and sometimes we'll just shoot each other clips of like when they were young and like the stupidest things that we've said and done. And we just laugh at each other. And yeah. Antonia cringes. She's like, Oh my God. Like, I can't. What do you think when you look back at the uh, pop star Melissa Gorga era on the show? Do you look back and cringe or do you look back and was like, you know what? It was fun. I had confidence doing that. I mean, a little bit of both. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I, I, a little bit of both because there's a piece of me that's like, wow. Like I was young. I was 31 when I started filming this show. And I'm like, I had balls to just stand yeah. next to a piano and be like, hold on, I'm going to sing this <laughs> acapella with this piano. And those are the ones I watch back and like people, and I'm like, oh my God. But like, I get it now. I get why the show was so popular and such a big deal. I mean, we really, we really showed it all. We bared it all. We, you know, there was a lot of moments that we just kind of put it out there. And I look back now and I'm not embarrassed now because now I'm like, yeah. that was so great. That was great TV. That is yeah. so funny that I thought I could stand there and just sing a cappella like that. Like I, oh. you know, like I was ready to go. So, yeah. And I do think, listen, the songs were fun. Everywhere I go, everyone still will just start singing on display to me. So I, I love that it's yeah. like a little piece of the iconic Jersey Housewives. I love that it that's a piece of it. Yeah, you I know. mean, announce the name of your podcast, On Display. Yes, there you go, On Display. Yeah, and we, you know, on my podcast, which I'm dying to have you on as well, we just do, like, very fun, like, relationship, like, unfiltered conversations. Yeah. We discuss, talk to other housewives. So that's been an awesome thing that's come out of the show as well. So now that we just wrapped up this most recent season, and I feel like the network's been pretty clear that whatever the show is moving forward will be different from what we had. But now that we've kind of had a closing to that chapter, like, how do you feel moving forward? I feel like, so when I first think about it, it's like a sigh of relief, if I'm being honest, because it feels like good change is coming. Yeah. I don't know what the change is, but I think we were all like, ready for a change everyone on the cast yeah. not just me right so i like that we're finally hearing while well, it's coming yeah what it's going to be as you know and we all know we don't know yeah. and the truth is we don't whenever you see like these little comments or it's going to be these three or these two or the yeah. nothing is true they do not they do not they're they are casting right yeah. now is what i believe um you know, I'm hearing little tidbits of this one interviewed and that one interviewed and yeah. who did whose makeup for this and that. So I think they're very much still still like figuring it all out. Yeah. I mean, and we'll see where it goes. I saw you still seem to be hanging out with like Dolores, Rachel, Danielle, who on the court or who from last season's cast are you still keeping in touch with? Um, I keep in touch with pretty much all the girls, you know, minus two. And um, they're all great. Like, I do have a relationship with all of them. Like, I have a lot of fun with them all. I have, you know, obviously the tight, a tight relationship with Dolores. I've known her forever. You know, we've, we've, I've known her since I'm 24 years old, just dating yeah. Joe. Um, Margaret and I have gotten very close over the years with the show. You know, Rachel and I, our sons are really good friends. And John and Joe are good friends. And Rachel and I are great friends. So, and Danielle and I have been doing a lot of, like, um, appearances and stuff together that people were requesting the two of us together. So her and I are kind of like, we're so we're fun, you know, so we yeah. have like a lot, we have fun together. Um, so that's been really great. So yeah, I pretty much talked to them all. Do you miss not having a reunion? I, I do like having a reunion because that's kind of where I feel like I shine most of the time. That's where I feel like I, I'm ready to go. I come in prepared. But if we were going to have a last reunion, I'm so happy it's the one of me in the blue dress because yeah. I feel like, you know, I got it all out. So we're good. I was yeah. good. But, you know, moving forward, if the show moves on, I would, I, I believe, you know, they would bring that back. But I feel like for this season, I totally agreed with what, you know, Andy and Bravo were saying. We weren't getting anywhere. Like it yeah. was going to be more of the same. It didn't matter. There was going to be no like, reconnecting that wasn't happening it yeah. was like dead so i get it a lot of fans felt like the that uh 
I guess, rewatch special that replaced the reunion, that it didn't really give us much. Do, were you happy with kind of that final sit down at Rails? Um, no, I agree. It didn't give us much. I yeah. felt like it was a lot of rewatching the finale again. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, this, we don't need this. This is, I, I just, I agree. It wasn't like a, I don't think it was like the best episode yeah. <laughs> that, that came out of it, but I think they wanted to give everybody something. Yeah. I just don't think they know what, and I think that proves their point. Like, see, we did not need a reunion. There was yeah. no need for it. Yeah. You know? Which I thought the finale was actually pretty good. I mean, you know, everybody kind of got to say their piece. They got to kind of bring some resolution. And then we kind of got to to move off and, and sail into the sunset. For sure. Yeah. You know. It probably would have been now knowing what the rails thing was. I was like, okay, we could have just left it there. <laughs> um, sure. I want to do a rumor roundup with some reports that have come out recently. If you can debunk or confirm, I feel like some of these may we may be putting some rumors to rest. Okay. Um, first one is uh, there's a report. There was a, a report that came out in Life and Style recently that said you and Teresa have agreed to make amends for the sake of saving the future of Real Housewives of New Jersey. That is completely untrue. Yeah, I would love to know like who started that or how that came out, but that is completely untrue and fabricated. Um, Deadline took some quotes that you did in a recent interview and reported that you do not want to be part of the show at all if Teresa returns. Um, my comment on that was actually from my podcast. I forget who I was on with, but I had said, like, I don't want to come back to the toxic Real Housewives of New Jersey and what that was. It was getting really dark and yeah. something that I wasn't proud of to even be on. I feel like that part of the show I've grew out of. Yeah. Uh almost I feel like I want I was what I was trying to say was I want to be on The Real Housewives of New Jersey, but I want it to be a housewife show. Yeah. That is a very toxic, dirty, like way more work than it's worth like outside of the show yeah. with how our castmates were talking to bloggers and giving them screeners so that they had like one up. I mean, if you think about this, it's pretty crazy and genius. I mean, giving them the opportunity to watch the episode so that their tweets were ready for, so they were the first one out there with the highest engagement of tweets. Yeah. Okay. That is pretty, that is some like mastermind. That is like someone sitting back there really trying to win. Yeah. And for the, for the girls who do not do that, it's just unfair. It's like, we don't get paid for all that extra yeah. work. And um, so, yeah, for that, I don't want to be a part of that. I feel like there's lots going on out there and there's other things to do. But do I love being on the Housewives franchise? Do I love working with Bravo? Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, we just have to see what that turns into. How do you feel like the toxicity of the later seasons was different from the drama in the earlier seasons? Because obviously, like, your family drama played out and, like, that was really heavy. Um do you think it is just the social media component where like other people were getting involved and kind of just like taking it to another level? Yes. I think that we've always had a little bit of a toxic franchise because we're family yeah. and um, the two different, we're very, this is more of a team franchise, I would say than the rest. Right. So it's always been a little bit more toxic. It's like, it's like, we're like the, uh, it's like political almost, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> For lack of a better word. Yeah. Um, so it's like, whose team are you on? It really rah, rah, is. Rah. I never thought of it that way, but you're right. It really is like almost like politics. Like you're either one side or the other. And like, there's no, you can't be anywhere in the middle. There's very few in the middle. Yeah. Very few. It's like, no, 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 no. This is like, I'm either here or there. Right. So I feel like that definitely was always how this show went for a very long time. But when you have cast members that are then egging on those people yeah. and personally calling them on the phone, now you have your favorite reality star ringing your phone yeah. and giving you, well, then you're going to amp it up, I think, and yeah. take it to the next level and really make some of the other cast members as miserable and almost like the most inappropriate like yeah. things as possible. And that's where... I guess like Bravo had to step in and everybody was like, okay, like yeah. this is not allowed. 
how, yeah. how did you personally, and even having to protect your kids, because I would, I would imagine some of it would bleed onto them. How would you deal with some of that social media backlash? Because I've seen it on Twitter and I'm like, it's so wild how toxic some of the fans have gotten with how nasty that they are in their rhetoric towards certain housewives. And we forget that like, this is a television show that we watch because it's entertaining. And yeah, we like the petty drama, but like, we don't need to be involving ourselves in other people's lives. Right. I think that's just when it's like, it gets to a level of like, wow, like what is actually going on here? And it raised a lot of red flags for us to all start to say like, we need to figure out why this is going this way. And fortunately for us, and it was like a blessing to be honest, some of the worst ones that were, we actually knew them by name. We knew their accounts yeah. because it was just so repetitive. And it was like, we used to say like they have to be being paid they have something has this is not no no one's waking i get yeah. that there's fans but like this is like 24 yeah. 7 and we were very grateful that a lot of them something must have you know came out and said yep yeah this is what's happening and i was on the phone and what i do with the toxic to go back to your question i don't go on twitter like yeah. for me it's not Smart. it's too like dark and crazy and like anyone can say anything w without having facts Opposed to like, at least Instagram, there's a picture, you can totally tell it's like yeah. where it's coming from, if it's a bank account, what the situation is, if it's a bot. Twitter is just like, a, you can literally say, hey, I watched her rob a bank yesterday and like, you, you can say anything. So you, yeah, you put it out there and then it people run with it and retweet it and then suddenly it becomes a rumor. That like, like for sure. And I know you know all this. You deal with so many of the franchises. So you know how this goes down. I know? do. And it's just so interesting when it comes to um Jersey though, because I feel like with Jersey, there is just this additional level of like heaviness to it. That for sure. For sure. And it makes it I mean, think about it. For even the fans, honestly, started to complain and say, like, yeah. this is out of control. So imagine how the cast members feel. Yeah. Like exhaustion is not even close to explaining how exhausting it is what did you think of what went down on salt lake city where you had monica who was on the show she was a cast member only to find out she was behind like one of those troll accounts i mean now it doesn't seem as crazy <laughs> now that i have this like now i'm like wait a second i mean it almost doesn't feel as bad as like what was going on here this was triple that yeah, yeah. in hindsight right so i'm just like I mean, crazy. Listen, I think the show is awesome, Salt yeah. Lake, and I think that the drama was awesome, but I get that being in the position of the girls that this was happening to. Listen, when cast members go that far and they're living and breathing the show to that aspect, it's when you need to sit back and say, maybe it's time to like take a break because yeah. You know, what makes these shows great is like when you're not as invested, when the yeah. cameras come and you're just living your life and speaking your truth. And but when these girls are tweeting and making accounts and doing that, it's like, all right, it, it, you need to like yeah. sit. Everyone needs to sit down for a moment, you know? Yeah, because at that point you're taking it too seriously and and it takes the fun out of it. It's like you're producing it at yeah. that point then. It's like the girls start to produce the show and that is not what this is about. Yeah. What do you think about, I don't know how much you're following OC, but we have like um, Shannon Bedore and Alexis Bellino who used to be on the show, who's now dating Shannon's ex. And so now we see her coming back on the show and threatening to release videos and kind of defending Shannon's ex on the show. Yeah, see, here's the thing. I loved the era of OC when Alexis was on, and I loved when Gretchen and Tamara were like, who's the prettiest? I'm the prettiest. No, I'm the hottest <laughs> housewife. Like, those were the best years yeah. of OC. And honestly, I think that um, she could have came on and not just talked about herself, that yeah. I do wish she would have given us more of her life. I mean, I want to know what happened with her ex. I want to know yeah. how her kids are, how she's lived. Like, I don't think, I, I don't know how she feels about this right now, but I do think if she would have came on and shared more about her life and what's going on with her and not talked about the boyfriend so much, 
I think everyone would have embraced her a lot more. I think yeah. everyone would be interested. People are actually interested. They love to bring back like an, an old housewife that used to be on and bring them back on. Well, we don't want to hear you like talk about the guy all day long. We want to hear about you and, and your life now. We haven't seen you in years, you yeah. know? So that's how I kind of feel about that. I do feel for, I feel like, you know, Tamara has her, Tamara definitely has her foot on Shannon's neck. Um, <laughs> She and I, and I and I love them both with that said. And I like it's just that show is it brings the drama and yeah. it's so real. And so I I I feel for them. I do think we're gonna see Tamara and Shannon kind of come back around eventually. I do. I hope that I we do. So. I think we're going to. I mean, we've seen them go up and down so many times. All of the women on these shows, you know, you're you're so up and down. And eventually, you know, as with time and with a little space and clarity and with the audience kind of tuning out when the season's not airing, it gives you an opportunity to kind of look at things with a fresh perspective. Um, on Atlanta, we see that they're trying, they didn't do a full reboot, but they brought back they brought back Portia, they brought back Phaedra, they brought back Cynthia. Should they move forward and kind of do the same thing with Jersey with you on it? Who would you like to see back from Jersey past? Like who would you like to see kind of either be a, a part-time housewife or maybe come back full-time? Oh my God. That is, that would be such a controversial answer. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> I don't know. Are you talking about like old, like ones that haven't been on or the current past? I mean, pick, I mean, you can bring back Jacqueline, and you listen, can bring back Kim D, you can bring back Caroline. I mean, Kathy's Kim across D was the street. Never a housewife. Kim D was never a housewife. She was never even, I don't even think she was a friend of, believe yeah. it or not. I do think she manages to still, you know, she still like gets in there and, and talks and talks to like, I guess she talks to some of the girls. Um, but I don't know. I I don't know. I feel like our room when we were divided at Rails. Yeah. I feel like our room really showed like a little bit of back and forth and true friendships. I really do. And yeah. I do think there is a need for some new girls too. But who knows? Like this is Bravo is the mastermind when it comes to this. So yeah. I'm just gonna leave all of that up to them and let them make the decision. And you're fine if you if you don't come back. I mean, yeah, what am I going to do? If if this is, if that's the route they take, then, then that's the route they take, you know? For me personally, just as a viewer, I really enjoyed, what was it, Rachel, when she hosted that pajama night where everyone came over. To me, I feel like that cast, like everybody seemed, even though there was some tension and there was a little bit of drama, um, I feel like everyone in that group was still able to put on a good show, still have fun and be able to put their drama aside or deal with their conflicts in the moment that, you know, it, there was still, I think there's still pieces of the cast that can still work moving forward. I agree with you on that 1000% without naming names. I do agree that yeah. that's true. And that did feel like a real housewives episode that we hadn't had all season. Yeah. Right. It was I like agree. a bunch of girls, like really not loving each other, but like sitting around a table, showed a little fun, showed a little arguments, like showed a little bit of your side, my side. Like that's what Housewives is all about. I'm curious what your thoughts are on the pump rules finale. Cause I know um, Lala Kent was very critical of Ariana for walking out of the finale and not wanting to face Tom Sandoval. And that like caused a big conversation about whether or not, you know, on these shows, especially in the finale, which I've always considered like the finale or the reunion, kind of like the Super Bowl of the season. Like this is the big grand finale of what we're all, you know, waiting to reach by the end of the season is that final conflict, that final resolution, the conclusion. Um, what did you think? Were you, do you understand Lala's side of it? Or do you kind of understand Ariana's side of like walking out to respect her boundaries, even though she's on a reality show? Okay, don't laugh at me. I did not watch it. I did not see this season. I saw the previous season yeah. with everything else, but I did not. I feel like we were either filming at the same time that this season came on. So I can't even comment on it because I literally didn't watch it and I didn't see it. I know that's terrible. It's like unheard of, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Vanderpump Rules has been a lightning rod for, ever since Scandaval. Oh my God. I know. I know. And I watched the whole 
you know, Scandaval. I saw all of that. And then I kind of dropped off the next season. Yeah. I don't know. I think we were filming during it. So I didn't see it. Um, well, speaking of bringing somebody back to Jersey, what did what do you think about maybe bringing Kathy Wakili back? Because I know you guys, she lives across the street now. You guys have kind of had some words about each other in the press lately. Is that something you would be open to? Listen, yeah, 100%. I thought what, what happened in the press was someone asked me, I think it was Jeff Lewis or someone asked me, about Kathy and I said, oh no. I said, you wanna hear something really funny? She's building a house across the street from me. And I guess then Andy Cohen asked on Watch What Happens Live. And I and I said positively about Kathy, like, listen, it, truthfully, that's Joe's first cousin. Yeah. It's a shame of how this, none of this family talks to one another. Like I do speak, you know, I have great relationships with my cousins and my sisters. And it's sad for me that Joe doesn't have that. So what I said was, well, this might be really nice to like run into your cousin that's across the street. You're now going to live across the street from each other. Maybe they can say hi out in the streets or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I feel like Kathy, I don't know. She said something on Watch What Happens Live that wasn't like super friendly or she said oh i know what she said she said oh well how convenient timing yeah. that would be and i think she's referring to the fact that like the show is kind of you know all I'm over fine. the place yeah. and that maybe our relationship with our family i don't i don't i'm assuming that's what she's talking about but uh to me i'm like yeah it is convenient you live across the street yeah so you guys might bump into each other and that's simply all I meant. I don't, I don't mean it for anything else. You know, that was kind of my read on it. Cause I did listen to the Jeff Lewis interview and I watched Kathy on watch what happens live. And I was like, I was surprised by her reaction. Cause I was like, yes. from what I remember, like it was more of just like, it's, I mean, it's awkward. You live across the street. It would be awkward to like never see each other or avoid each other. Like at least if you, if there's a possibility of running into each other, at least let it not be awkward, you know, for that and sake. That was exactly, thank you. That is exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not like we're just like head of nowhere picking up the phone like, hey, yeah. we want to talk. It's like, no, you are you live across the street. Yeah. So maybe you'll bump into each other. But now I'm kind of like, whatever. Like, yeah. I feel like it put a little like, it did put a little bad taste in my mouth. So yeah. I'm just like, whatever. I neither here nor there with that. But I would never, I do think it could be interesting if she rejoined the show. I mean, hey, listen, this show, you know, this show loves family drama. So yeah. <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> For sure. Uh, and I also understood how like you were like, and Joe and Rosie were really close. Like it would just naturally, you know, be nice if they were able to to put the past behind them. But it was also just to me, and these are my words, that like I just thought it was funny that she was like, oh, how convenient when I'm like, but like you're not even on, Kathy's not even on the show. Like nobody's, it's not like they offered her a contract and like your future was like, you know, up in the air and like you needed her to stay on the show. I was like, I, you're not even on the show. Like it was so bizarre to me. Exactly. No, exactly. I felt like she was really jumping the gun there. Like as if somebody yeah. was saying like the show's over, we need you now. We got to put, like, I was like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Like that's what I feel like she was referring to. And that's why I was like, what do you, what? I feel like even Andy kind of was like, huh? You yeah. know? Like, um, have you kept in touch with Caroline at all? So Caroline, not since all of the drama went down. Yeah. Um, I actually had her, I did speak to her right before all of that drama went down before she went and filmed the the girls trip. I had a whole conversation with her. We were talking about her grandchild and just like catching up. And she, you know, she had said the whole thing about Brandy and how, you know, she was nervous to meet everybody. And, and, and I thought I gave great advice to Brandy and to Caroline. And then when I heard the news, just like everyone else, I was like, oh, like, yeah, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. But no, I haven't. I haven't been caught up since then. Uh, were you surprised to even hear that she would do Ultimate Girls Trip? Because you did Ultimate Girls Trip season one, so yes. you kind of knew yeah. what to expect. I just was surprised because she hadn't been on TV for so long, yeah. and to get thrown in there like that, which is you guys don't realize, it's ten full days of filming yeah. around the clock. And I mean, they are in your room at seven a.m. micing you, and they are not taking that mic off sometimes till two in the morning. So you can't even like breathe without them yeah. catching it. I remember at one point, 
in the middle of the night, I was like on the phone with Joe or something, and I went out to get some food in the kitchen, and all of a sudden, a little camera oh, in yeah. a corner started like, I was like, what the <laughs> hell? And even when he went to like sit outside, the camera was there. So I was like in shock that at first that she even wanted to do that. But I yeah. think she had went to Bravo Con that year. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she felt very embraced by everyone. And she felt like, you know, she felt warm and fuzzy at Bravo Con. I know that. And so then she thought, okay, maybe I'll do this. And it's unfortunate what went down. It's, yeah. I, you know, I feel like we all want to watch all of them too. We wanted to see that, you know, not yeah. even just that situation, but we definitely wanted that to cast, see all of them. Like that ladies. group of yeah. women. I mean, we had Gretchen, who we haven't seen on TV in a while. We had Alex McCord, who we haven't seen on TV, Camille Graham. Like it was all, you know, I was excited I for that group. They need a redo. They need a yeah. redo. Like some of them at least. Like that was like. And I feel bad for like the Gretchens and Alex and like the girls who were probably so excited to like break back into the Bravo universe a little bit. And then they got it all pulled. That's, you know, I'm sure that sucks for yeah. them. They're probably pissed. Well, now we have this new dating show coming to Peacock with like Shannon Bedore and Ashley Darby. Um, you've been in a long-term relationship. Do you have any dating advice to some of these fellow housewives that are ready to to jump back into the dating game oh my god i feel like i haven't dated in <laughs> so long either um but you know what i always say like guys appreciate a chill funny girl like take the eyelashes off believe it or not like i believe that they like less is a lot more i feel like it goes a long way and it's like when you try less i always feel like it comes it comes across more when you're dating. Like yeah. someone who's just trying too hard and putting it all on and overly make up some of the girls and putting all the, like just be fun, funny, you know, real. And that's always my advice. Cause listen, I have a lot of hair and makeup girls that come here all the time and they give me the best stories. It's my favorite hour of the yeah. day is when I'm getting glam and my single glam girls tell me about like, who they're dating and what's going on. And trust me, all I do is give advice the whole entire time to all of these girls. So I will definitely be watching that show. I'm very excited for that. Uh, well, you had your book, Love Italian Style. Do you feel like any of the advice or any of the stuff that you talked about in that book has changed? Because it's, I mean, you're obviously a lot longer into your marriage now. Now the kids are growing up and, you know, you and Joe are going to be looking at what the next chapter of your life is going to look like. Yeah, actually, I do. I feel like I'm a very different wife uh, 20 years later than I was in the beginning. And a lot of, you know, not all of them. I still believe in a lot of the stuff I said and wrote, but there's definitely some edits. I believe that I would edit to that book. I should come out with part two. And it wouldn't be completely opposite advice because there's a lot of things I do stand by. Um, but there's also a lot of things that I have changed just, you know, from being a 25 year old that married my husband to now yeah. a 45 year old. That's two totally different human beings, you know? Yeah. How do you even keep the marriage, you know, cause you, you grow like with every decade, you essentially become an entirely new person. Like how have you and Joe been able to grow together and still kind of keep that unit strong? You know, it's crazy because when everyone now is talking about like the show might end or show might be over, I sit and evaluate a little bit. And I'm like, wait a second, like from year four of my marriage, literally, I've only I was only married four or five years before I got on The Real Housewives of New Jersey. So I'm like almost our whole entire marriage has been on yeah. national TV. Like we're so used to like you know, the people and their comments, the good comments, the bad comments, yeah. like whatever it might be, it really made me open my eyes and be like, wow, Joe, our whole marriage, like we've gotten through almost our whole entire marriage on reality television. And I think that's like, it's pretty crazy. So I'm like, oh, everything else should be a walk in the park. We're good. We're good from here on out. I mean, we can get through that and cheating rumors and this and that and all this crap that these girls are like throwing against the wall to see what would stick. It's like, oh my God, it's kind of crazy to believe that like this is what it is, you know, that we've been on TV this long. But I don't know. My advice to everyone is just keep 
your marriage the forefront, especially to the housewives that are new on reality television. Like yeah. nothing matters. I know it seems like you need to change your life and change the world and take power and puff up your chest and like, no, just keep it real. Keep your focus, marriage, your kids, you know, your businesses, you know, I just feel like you can't lose yourself and you can't think you're bigger than your partner. That's the biggest thing. Like you need to shine together. Yeah. And I've always, I've always been very good at shining with Joe together yeah. as a couple. I also feel like some housewives try to create issues in their relationship to give them something to discuss on camera, you know, like maybe forcing their husbands to go to therapy against their will just for the sake of working out their relationship on camera. Um, do you feel like you guys have always, have you ever felt pressure to put some of your marital issues on the show? Well, Joe and I had one year that, well, there was a couple years, actually. There was the whole envy situation. Yeah. The truth was, he was not being supportive about it. Yeah. He was, you know, he was, but he wasn't. And he was so skeptical. And he was saying, like, I don't need your crumbs because yeah. he was probably feeling intimidated. Like, not only is my wife now on this housewife show, but she also wants to go and make her own money yeah. and create her own income and have to leave the house and do these events without me because he's not part of Envy. Where I, so like there was a lot of struggle and we showed a, a, enough of it, I would say, yeah. on the show. But that was real. And then there was a whole nother part of struggle that him and I went through where. I was out of the house too much, the truth was. And I was doing events and fashion weeks and going to more things, promoting envy. And let me tell you, it worked. I was right. <laughs> but, you know, and yeah. he laughs at that now. But, like, we struggled through that. Yeah. I do have an old-fashioned, you know, everybody knows that. He's very old school in a lot of ways. He's come a long way. He's come a long way. But, like, he was very, like, much so, like, a very traditional marriage type of guy. So it was hard to break Joe Gorga into what he is today. And I promise you, he it is it is a 180 compared to what it was when I got married, like a different human yeah. when it comes to these things. So it was all worth it. And like envy is thriving. It's amazing. Yeah. Like it's the best thing that I ever did. So, um, you know, it's, it's all, it's all good. Yeah. I mean, and listen, you've been through a lot on the show. You went from being a stripper to being a <laughs> cheater to like in the final episode, you were a whore. Like you really, <laughs> I'm laughing. You it's faced really it all. Freaking funny, but I'm laughing because I'm like Jesus Christ. Like you try. No, you forget. There was other things. Like there was like home. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like break up the family. I think I was a, a, a money hungry or something at yeah. one point. I wanted like money hungry. I worked my ass off. You know, like yeah. so many things. I think people forget. Like in in the beginning seasons, there was even more the most ridiculous things. Like so ridiculous. So um, I think that's what I like, what I feel like I really evolved. Yeah. You could almost say anything to me right now. I'm like, okay, like unaffected, like completely unaffected. You, I mean, you were thrown to the wolves since your first season. Like the first, that was Strippergate, right? That was the season. Was. Yeah. Season three and I four. I was thrown to the wolves is an understatement. I mean, I really went into the show that was like, at its top at that time right and yeah. it was just they threw me in i had no idea of how bad it was going to be i was young mom at the time yeah. joey was two months old i was 30 or 31 and i was just and i watched myself to, if i'm being honest in those scenes seasons three seasons four um as this young mom kind of in this family that was very strong minded and yeah. and I'm like, oh my God, like I would say so many different things now to speak up for myself, yeah. to defend, like I just watch it and I'm almost like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so happy those years are over and I have evolved and I am a true example of how for any young moms out there or girls that are struggling in any of that, like you will come into your own, you will find like your voice, it, it it does it does get better, but it is sometimes hard for me to watch some of that because I'm like, oh, why did I just take that? Why did I yeah. forgive that? Why was I okay in the next scene? Why am I not mad or yeah. whatever it was? Like watching it back, I it's frustrating. 
Do you now looking back have any regrets about how you joined the show? Because you took a lot of heat for, you know, how you kind of backdoored your way onto the show. Do you have any regrets about that? Or do you you stand by everything that you said? I just think there's no, it's, it was so black and white. And I feel like I've said this a thousand times. Like when you tell someone, hey, and you haven't even done the interview yet. And you say, I'm going to go interview and they say oh what I, like annoyed obviously but like good luck that's not behind any i just don't know yeah. how else to explain it like yeah. how else do i explain yes i took the opportunity when it was handed to me but i i am a housewife living in new jersey in northern jersey in the town that everybody was filming in yeah it's just like, why should I say no? Like, yeah. like I, I took an opportunity and guess what? I'm happy I did. Yeah. Oh, I mean, listen, if anybody's really faced a lot, of, but the, I feel like the crazy part, and it, it's weird because I know even me saying this, like the Jersey stands are going to be upset about it, but it's like a lot of the things that were said about you and Joe, or I guess specifically you, you know, being the primary uh, cast member a lot of those things never were proven to be true. Whereas like other cast members had things that like have been, they've been caught red handed. And I'm like, it's wild to me that like, you're still like one of the, there you're still like such a lightning rod for so many fans. I, it's crazy. And you know what, maybe I should start embracing it and looking <laughs> at it like, well, thank you because I don't actually have to go through this trauma in life that you guys think I'm going through or like it's almost became like the rhythm of the show it's like who's coming for Melissa who's coming for me who's gonna like make a rumor up who's gonna try to debunk like whatever life it is that they think I live like and debunk my marriage or try to make it like I'm not what I am it's like I feel like I worried about that in the first couple seasons because people didn't know me, but now I have zero fear about it because you've seen me for so many years. Yeah. The writing is on the wall. I've met so many fans. I I don't even need to explain anymore. I think people see it clear as day. They know me, they know Joe, yeah. they know who we are. You guys know my kids. You see how my kids are raised. Like there's no need to try to prove anything to anyone anymore. I feel yeah. like we've been around long enough that if, you know people have our number and that's that yeah what's uh what's next for you should Ju- jersey not continue what do you think would be where you head next that's a really good question um there's a lot of different avenues i will say that i'm looking into currently too to do like next to housewives if housewives come back um i don't know that i would want to do a reality show at all to be honest that's about my life anymore or joe or a family reality show i don't think is very high on my list um obviously hosting is what everyone always says that i should be doing and obviously i have a little knack for it it's something that you know i do love interviewing people on the podcast as well and talking to people um definitely hosting of some shows and things like that. So there's definitely some things that we're, we're we're talking about right now and we'll just, we'll see what happens. I'm that girl. I don't like to like pre-talk. Yeah. I like it to just, you know, we'll see what happens. But listen, I love this business. I love the entertainment business. I love being part of everyone's lives. I'm very, you know, I'm on social media constantly. I talk to my fans. I keep in touch with them. I show them what I love. I, you know, I have a relationship with, with, with people outside of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what's next, but. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you're the most followed Jersey housewife on Instagram. I am. Yeah. Yes, 2. I point, am. 2.9 I am. million. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know what it is? I think I'm just good on social. I, first of all, I've been around, you know, besides my sister in law I've been around the longest. Yeah. Um, I think people forget that. Like it's been since season three. It's been, it's been a really long time. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I have a huge customer base out there as well. People who buy from me, they buy from Envy. Um, great at marketing. Um, and I think I just keep it very natural and real on social. Uh, I show them a lot of my everyday life. I'll show them where Joe's sitting on the couch. I'll show them what I'm making for dinner. And so I think that brings that brings people on. They enjoy to see like the side. They watch my kids in sports and stuff like that. So, um, you know, yeah, I love connecting with people on social. Yeah. 
Well, Melissa, thank you for coming on the show. Always, always a great time chatting with you. And I look forward to to what happens next with you and Joe and the kids um, and with Jersey. I mean, I would love to see you come back. We'll see what Bravo decides, but I'm a fan. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a fan as well. So keep doing you. You're killing it out there, by the way. See all these awesome interviews you're doing. <laughs> you are killing it. So good for you. I'm thank happy you. for you. I appreciate that. You're thank welcome. you. You're welcome. All right. We'll talk soon. Yes. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.